just me and my guitar What's going on guys, Mark in the workshop on Mark's Aquatics, it's New Year's Eve, I'm bored and I'm in the workshop, I've got all these pipes down here on the floor and I've been looking at this morning, having my coffee and I'm thinking what can I make out of that this morning and it went ping in my head like it always does, let's make a brine shrimp hatcher, so we've got lots of other bits up here on the bench top, over there I've got some various bits of acrylic solid rod and um, some sheet there as well, different various thicknesses so I think what we're going to do is we're going to make a nice little, a nice little, a nice little artemia hatchery because I like, I, I, I want to feed the shrimp tank here because of the endless. Oh, let's go back a bit and zoom out. There you go. Oh, we've gone everywhere here. That's better. Right, we've had a lot of sheds in there last night as well. Obviously, because we've given them a water change, and they always tend to shed after you put them in or give them a water change. And um, so I think that's what we're going to do. We've got the endlers in there and I plan to get some cardinal tetras for in here as well. So I want to try and breed some, well not try, very very simple to breed Artemia. But we're going to build a nice little funky little hatcher today. Something that looks a little bit different to everything else that's out there on the market. And um, let's get on with this build I think. Let's roll. First of all guys, got to put my hat on. Never make anything without putting my hat on. It's my thinking cap. I need this, or it all goes wrong. Right, what I've got here, I've got a nice bit of, I think it's about six mil acrylic there, and I've just marked out that triangle on there, and I've just buzzed one side off. You can see I've buzzed it off at 45 degrees, like that. And I'm gonna carry on doing that all the way around now, so we get a nice little triangle. I'll get back to you guys when I've done that. Right, there you go. I've just buzzed that off on the saw to save your little ears all that noise. You see I've made a nice little 45 degree. Now that's going to be the base. I thought we can make a, a round base but let's make a nice triangle pyramid type base that we can put down first like that. And then I've got some lovely acrylic, solid acrylic. I think it's about an inch that is across. Let me get my tape. Yeah that's just over an inch that is. That's an inch and a quarter that is bit of bar so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to buzz a piece of that off on the saw there you go cut a nice little piece off there now and I think what we're going to do is I'm going to stick that in the center of there like that it'll be nice when this is all done because I can flame polish all these edges up as well and make it all uh, make it all nice and shiny I do like that when you flame polish the edges it really does finish it all off and make it look nice I used to make these years ago when I was a kid, not, not obviously not like this one, but um, I used to make them out of coke bottles, they're very very simple to make, anything with an airline in, just as how you would really, how you would make a reactor with a coke bottle, where obviously you put the pipe in the top there and have the gases coming out through into your, um, into your diffuser or your air stone, whatever you want to push it through, um, but then you, you just invert it, you cut the top of the bottle off like that, you got the airline coming in, you put an air stone in the bottle on the top, like that. You put your Artemia eggs in the top, connect it to an air pump, put it in a little stand or just wedge it between something and just keep that oxygen very, very uh, air, sorry, slowly, slowly tumbling those, uh, those little eggs and within no time at all, they'll all pop out of their little shells and you'll have thousands of them in there. But I always found it's almost a nightmare trying to get them out because what happens is, is the shells when they pop out they tend to go to the bottom and the shells will float to the surface okay and then it's a nightmare then trying to get through the eggs and you have to skim all the eggs off and it's a ripe palaver so this is what I'm going to do now I've got this lovely piece of clear tube here which is two and that's two and a half that is two and a half no it's not it's two and a quarter inch there you are which is 56 mil outside diameter that is 56 mil now what I want to try and do I'm going to put that on top of there but we've got to make a solid a solid base for it and I've got some nice big thick acrylic there which I'm going to put on the edge so I'm just going to cut me a piece of that out so bear with me a second 
Right, just cut me a nice little square out like that. Beautiful stuff. And now we can stick that onto there. So now that will be onto the top of there like so. Okay. And then we're going to stick that on the top of there like that. It's not going to be as tall as that, I'm going to cut the pipe down probably to about here because you do get a massive hatch with Artemia so you don't want to be going putting too many eggs in thinking I'll oh, just chuck a whole load in because you'll have billions of them and you'll never keep them all alive and you'll just end up wasting lots of them so the best thing to do I found is make smaller reactors, make a little you know just a little bit if you like, make a few out, get a few thousand out whatever and just chuck them in and the fish go mad for them Right, that's the plan. So that's going to be a nice little stable base. Now, what I've got, you remember those old mason jars that I had? Age, not mason jars, those water dispenser jars. <clears throat> well, I thought a cunning little plan. I've taken one of the taps off, look. And that's the reason why I've, I've made that a bit higher there. So we can put this right down the bottom. Like that, as far as I can get it down. You get these rubber grommets that come with it, which go through the hole in the glass, you see? And then that will that will take, that will bend and take the shape of the bottle and make that seal. So we're going to try and put that as low down as we can here. Drill a hole through there, so then when our Artemia hatch still go to the bottom, you just turn the tap on and they'll come straight out into your, into your little pot underneath. And I'll make a funky little pot to go with it as well. And then we'll have the uh, what about a good little hatcher. But then we've got to fix an airline in there as well. So you want to keep those those eggs tumbling away inside to make sure they're all nice aerated, aerated, sorry, and stay nice and healthy. Right, my little lovelies. I've just cut out a hole there now. There's my little my little drill. We're going all the way up to 18. You see, we've got a little gauge on there. See, it makes it easier for you to. Uh, to see what millimetre hole you've got and you can stop bang on the button there then now what we do is we get these little rubber grommets you think oh that's never going to go in there but believe me it will look at that that's popped in there now inside magic stuff now that now is designed to make a, a nice seal look push that through and now you've made a beautiful little seal and then we get the nut now we don't want to put anything in this, we want to leave it open, twist that little nut on in there like that, make it nice and waterproof, watertight sorry, and wind that up quite tight. You can get a little spanner in there and if you don't want to do that you can always hold it and twist the tap instead, which is a bit easier, but I think That will do it. And there we go, we got a very snazzy looking little tap on there now, see? All our little Artemia can come flying out of the tap. But now what we've got to do is put it onto there. We've got to glue it onto there now. I can take this off now, I'll just put that on there just for a sec. Because I've got other different things to do. So I'm going to keep that and stop the glue getting on it. I'll put it to one side so it stays all nice and neat. Pull that out of there. Careful with your rubber grommet when you push it out. Make sure you don't damage it because the edges of that can be quite sharp if you're going to make one of these guys. You can always run a little bit of, get your bit of sandpaper like that as well. Being careful not to scratch the, uh, the front. You've got a little bit of room there because the rubber grommet's going to cover it, so that's a bit better. That's a bit better. Right. Now what we've got to do is we've got to stick all these bits together. So I'm not going to bore you with all the sticking part. Basically, as always, we've got to take off the film. Try and leave this film on, guys, for the last to the last minute, really, before you take it off. Okay. Absolutely crystal clear, look at that, amazing stuff. 
As with this, we can take this piece off now. We don't want to scratch anything. There's still a piece on underneath. I'll leave that on because it's going to be covering the base. And we've got to polish all that up now. Now what I'm going to do first, guys, okay, I'll, I won't take you through it, but I'm going to get the sanding paper now on a block on the, on the top of the bench. And I'm just going to literally keep going over that and I'm going to sand all these little saw marks out like I'm doing here and get that as smooth as we can before we flame polish it. You can scrape it if you uh, if you want to do it that way you can get a nice one of these nice little funky blades put it on the angle and then it will just peel off obviously put it somewhere like so and then just scrape that across like that and that will give you a nice edge so that's what we're going to do we're going to go all around that first making sure that's all nice and tidy don't worry about that because I'm going to run the router around this later on and make a nice perfect little cylinder at the base like we did on the like I did on this one here you went on the on the shrimp trap that I made yesterday which worked pretty well I'm going to make a couple of these what I might what I might do guys some of you have been asking me if if, um, if if I would sell them or anything else like that. Now what I was thinking of doing, just to put a little bit more money back into the old coffers as it were, to buy more materials, to make more stuff, so you can see what I get up to. Um, I'm going to make these, or I'll make various things, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to stick them on eBay. I'll put them on eBay, and then you can pay whatever you want for them, alright? I'm going to put them on there for a 99p start, probably about a fiver for postage and packing something like that because it's going to go could go anywhere in the world so if I say a fiver for PMP and then whatever you guys think they're worth fire a bid down and um, and I'll sell them that way I think that's going to be an easier way for me to do it and the same goes for all this stuff really I think that's what I'll do I'll just do it it'll put a few pound back in the in my bank account so I can I can buy some more acrylic and stuff because acrylic's not cheap I do buy these box bits like the one you saw where that big box of bits came down. That was 70 quid for that box, but there was a lot in there. The guy done me a huge favour when he gave me this lot. I've still got hundreds of tubes over there, not hundreds, but loads of them. And um, there's all sorts we can make out of that. Loads of different stuff. But what I was going to do with, with the um, with the other tank there, where is it? Let me see if I can swing you around. This little guy here that we're going to give away. Now all these sort of pipes, I've been after some more of this big bore pipe to make something, to make another one of these and some bigger ones as well. Now he's got back in touch with me, obviously it's the weekend now and New Year's Day tomorrow so I don't expect to hear from anybody tomorrow because we're all going to have headaches. But um, he's going to get back to me. Now he's got some, I think, what's the measurement on that front of this one here? Okay, that's 220 mil that is across, but he has got some 300 mil, so it's going to be that diameter. It's a little bit bigger, but it's clear. So I was thinking along the lines of jellyfish tank or something along those lines. I always fancied having to go making a jellyfish tank and maybe even keeping some and make, get some of that mood lighting going on and all that stuff. I think that'd be quite a good idea. Right then, let's get. I'm going off track here, I'm wandering. Mark, focus. Right, let me clean this up. You've got to be careful with these little bits as well, alright guys, because they will scratch. They will scratch the other bits of acrylic that you put down quite easily. Because when you heat it up or or drill it, it goes quite brittle, it goes a lot harder. Right, so we got that bit of polish now. Let's get back on, on the game here, boy. This one to polish up now, get the edges done. So we've got to glue that onto the centre there. Glue that to the pipe. And once that's all gone off, then we can stick that with the base polished. Sorry, you're a bit out of frame there. You know where I'm going with this. You're right, you're saying, come on Mark, hurry up, I can hear you now. Right, so that's what we're gonna do. Glue that to that, glue that to that. Then that will go and glue on top of that. We can clamp it all up, leave it there for a couple of hours. And then I can round to the bottom of this off. Obviously before we stick it on there, polish it all up, make sure it's all tidy. 
and that is the job done really we can put a little lid on the top maybe i'll see what i can do on the lid later on but i'll do this bit first and then i'll get back to you when that's all done okay guys right i thought a bit better what i was going to do is I've got, I've got some of this now as well this acrylics 16 glue <clears throat> which i bought because this is a it's sort of a mid range kind of glue viscosity wise and it's a lot stronger on than the other stuff Right, that's stuck on there nicely now. Just making sure it's centralised or as near as. We got about 10 minutes working time with this guys like it says on there it says working time fixing time and and strength so you got five to six minutes you can be playing about okay fixed your times 10 minutes and then you're 80 percent fully bonded in 24 hours okay this stuff the longer you leave it the harder and the more it's a molecular bond it does it literally it melts this part and that part together and fuses it into one into one piece going to turn that over a minute because it's going to be easier for me to see you got about 10 minutes working time with this guys like it says on there it says working time fixing time and and strength so you got five to six minutes you can be playing about okay fixed your times 10 minutes and then you're 80 percent fully bonded in 24 hours okay this stuff the longer you leave it the harder and the more it's a molecular bond it does it literally it melts this part and that part together and fuses it into one into one piece i'm going to turn that over a minute because it's going to be easier for me to see give it a good old press down And the job is done. Right guys, that's those two bits glued up there. That bit's already going off quite nicely. But like I say, it's going to keep drying now for 24 hours, 48 hours, before you get that permanent sort of real molecular bond between the two. I've just stuck the, the top of the uh, acrylic sorry the, the glue off on top of that just to give it a little bit of downforce just to hold that down so I'm going to leave that now have a coffee come back that should be nice enough and solid enough to um, take some of those edges off and maybe run the router around it in about an hour's time right guys that bit's all dry now on the top of there all gone off nice and solid and I've just taken off the corners now and cut my finger not on the saw on the edge of that believe it or not very sharp acrylic it was actually when i was cutting the edge of that it's like a blade see when i was scraping it silly silly boy didn't put a glove on so wear gloves when you're doing that there's a tip for you and you won't end up with a finger like mine right now we've cut that off now now we can get the router and i'll run that around there and make that nice and flush then with that so i'll get back to you guys when i've done that all right okay there you go that's all been cut now along with the router so we've got a nice solid tube there now I haven't cut it down to length as yet so we're just gonna have to sand that up now for flame polishing as well okay okay guys what I've done is I've just cut a nice little 45 degrees out I've got a nice little kick off there okay we've got our little airlift tube there with acrylic that's nice and solid now 
everything's just been glued together so we're going to leave it now to go off and then we'll wash it all out put our little grommet back in put the nut back on that's going to be a bit fiddly but i will get it on there and um and then we can uh, click the airline to it and see how it happens right there you go guys i've filled it up with water Bit of flame polishing around the edges here and that looks pretty funky I've just connected it to the air pump and we can just turn him on and away he goes you can adjust those bubbles now just nice so it rolls those eggs nicely in that circular motion that's why I had the airline coming from the from the rear there so it comes up and then just makes that nice little oval swirl. You can see all the oxygen bubbles and things rotating around in there. Looks pretty funky to me and that will do a lovely job of breeding our little Artemia. Right guys, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to make a nice little pot to go with it. Look, we've got some of that, we've got some of the thick stuff left. So I'm going to bond that now to a piece of this. And we're going to make a funky little tub to put it in, to put the Artemia in, to tip them into our tank when it's when it's all done. So let me just move that out of the way there. Be careful with this stuff, guys, that you don't get it on the sides. If you get the, this stuff's quite stringy, and. Um, I know I use this so I've got some tensile as well but I haven't got that at the moment that's still in the post somewhere you get these little strings come off and you've got to be careful that they don't touch the sides give it a good press down you can see all the glue is squashed out And then just add a little weight to it like that again. For 10 or 15 minutes until that sticks together. Okay guys, I've just been away now. I've just finished off flame polish this little guy here. Flame polish all the top. We put a nice thick base on it so it looks like a nice little shot glass. Goes under there when the Artemia are in there now. We can all just wait till they hatch and then we can just pour them out. But not on this episode. Because this episode, that's going in it. Yep, yeah, a tot of whiskey for me. Anyway, guys, thanks for tuning into this little Artemia Hatcher build, and um, I hope you all enjoyed it. Anyway, that I was going to say is, hope you have a good time tonight. Don't drink too much enjoy yourselves i'm going to wish you a happy new year from mark's aquatics and um, all my family to your families whoever and wherever you are in the world take care of yourselves i love you all cheers and i'll see you on the next edition of mark's aquatics bye for now ah that was good take care guys bye bye just me and my guitar.